Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Now I've got a tutorial for you today. It's a bit of a technique. That means you don't need a foiling machine in your stash right now. So I'm going to show you how to create these lovely foil looking cards just using dies that I've got in my stash already and some mirror card. It's that easy to get the look. Now I'm not just gluing mirror card down onto these card bases, I'm actually doing another technique to make sure it's embedded into the cardstock and looking as realistic to foiling as possible. This is going to be a money saver for you and it's really quick and easy to do. I hope you love the examples that I've made here. So let's get onto the tutorial really quickly. And just a note, everything I've used is linked down below. And if you do love this video, I'd really love a thumbs up and a subscribe. Okay, let's get on with it. So to get started, you're going to need some basic crafting tools. Now you're going to need some thing to create your patterns with. I've got some of my textures dies, so die cuts, things like punches or even a trimmer to create some shapes is going to be absolutely perfect. You're also going to need some mirror cards or some foiled card stock. So I've got here a silver, a gold, a holographic and a rose gold. These are varying different brands. One of my favourites to use is the Sizzix Opulence packs. They come with uh, glitter, with matte finish, with uh, mirror finish cardstock as well and they're just beautiful so I've got a variation of different scraps here that I'm going to use and then lastly you are going to need yourself a die cutting machine I always use my Big Shot if you've got Big Shot Plus if you've got a Gemini whatever die cutting machine you've got is absolutely perfect essentially we're just looking for the pressure and you need to make sure of course that your base plate is large enough for the panel of cardstock that you want to add this faux foiling to. So let's get started with the technique. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating some die cuts. Now, I'm going to do a four different cards for you today. So I'm going to do one with a background, full foiled background, a foiled sentiment, a layered foiled embellishment, and then we're also going to do another background not using dies. Just to show you if you don't have that many dies in your collection yet that you can still create this technique. So I'll get die cutting first of all, get all my shapes cut out, and then we'll come back and show you exactly how to work through this faux foiling effect. So here's all my die cuts ready to start making some fantastic faux foiled panels and card fronts. Um, I'm going to show you in detail with this one, a beautiful background, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same with these so you can see a little bit of difference, but I won't run through all the details again for you to speed things up. Now, I've got my three die cuts, but I've also got some strips of cardstock here cut from the Silver Miri, but this could be uh, using your trimmer, it could be using punches, cutting hearts, circles, whatever it may be, whatever you've got to hand. So let's put these to the side, and I have used different coloured mirror cards for each element, just so that you can see what they all look like. I'm going with gold, and I have also prepared my bases that everything's going to go on. Now, my preference for this next stage is to use a spray adhesive, um, but I know not many people uh, have those in their stash, but they also don't necessarily like using them because they are an aerosol. So second to that, I would use um, a wet glue with a fine tip applicator. Now this gets fiddly because this is a large area, which is just why I like to use usually a spray adhesive. Um, but all you need to do is work out the panel that you're going to go onto. So I'm going to bring this up so that it's kind of central about there. And then I'm going to glue the entire area under here. Ideally as much as you can, rather than just some pieces, I'd like to add glue to everywhere. Again, this is why I prefer to use uh, a spray adhesive, but if you have got a fine tip applicator, it just takes a little bit longer. Uh, you need to be reasonably quick because of course you don't want the glue to dry. And I'm just using a wet glue. So uh, your Craft Stash glue, Creative Craft Products glue, your Sizzix um, Express glue, your Cosmic Shimmer glue, any of those will work just equally as well. So once the back is covered in glue, pop this onto your card front. Now what I've done is I've got myself the card base that I want. I've cut myself a mat of white cardstock that's just a little bit smaller, so it's going to fit under there perfectly. Now you want to adhere this down. And some people might be thinking, well, that's easy. That's just foiled cardstock, mirror card on cardstock. But the difference is, yes, you can leave it like this. You can leave it, but you have that raised area. Now foiling in general 
is flat to the card. It's embedded in the card and that's what gives it the fantastic foiled look. And you'll notice the difference when you do this technique. So I've got everything stuck down there. I'm just going to take a large pair of scissors. We could take a trimmer, but I prefer to be gentle with scissors while the glue's still drying and just trim all the way around the edge, as close to the edge as you can get. So now that's all glued down, we want to give it that foiled look. We want to make it look as if our cardstock is actually foiled. And for this, you're going to need to bring in your die cutting machine, but you're also going to need to bring in another tool. And that's something that often die cutting machines come with, and it's a rubber mat. This could be called an embossing mat, sometimes a tan in color, and people will call them a tan mat. Either way, they're a flexible rubber mat. It's got a bit of squidge to it. And what we're going to do is within our normal cutting sandwich, we're just going to lay our so far foiled piece in and our rubber mat on top. Okay, so directly on top of your mirror card and your cards. And we're just going to run this through in the same way as you would if you were die cutting. So there's going to be quite a bit of pressure there because you've added the mat in and you've not taken any plates out. And I'm just going to run it through the once. You can hear the pressure there. Now, as I lift this up, what's happened is all of that mirror card has embedded into the cardstock and it's smoothed out, it's flat. It now looks as if my cardstock is perfectly foiled with whatever color I want. I've got a beautiful foiled background, but I haven't got the raised areas that you'd expect to have if you just glued mirror card onto here. So for this one, then my next technique is going to be using that as a resist, the same way as you might if you actually had a foiled piece. So bringing in a blending mat, and I'm going to choose a couple of Distress Oxides. Now my color choice here is Salvage Patina, Kitsch Flamingo, and Wilted Violet. And if you love mixing your Distress Oxide colors and you want some more inspiration for color combinations, you can visit the playlist here that talks us through each and every one of the Distress Oxide colors. I'm working through them alphabetically. At the time of recording this video, there's about 20 videos in the playlist there, um, but it's got some fantastic color combinations included with each of those videos. So you can go and check that out after this one. And again, if you love that video, it'd be great to have a thumbs up on those. So now what you can do, of course, is just leave that bl blending out to white, which is beautiful, but I'm going to mix this into the other two colors to complete my background. And to bring back the shine from this foil, I'm just going to buff that off with a piece of kitchen towel, taking that excess ink off the foiled pieces on the mirror card. The now faux foiling, there we go. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? So it looks like a foiled piece of cardstock. You can also add your colors in, in any combination you want. That is going to make a stunning background for that card. I'll simply pop a sentiment on there and that's done. Isn't that beautiful? But let's get on to the next two as well. So the next one I'm going to do is also using die cuts, but I'm going to do a sentiment and I'm also going to do some layered butterflies. So I'll whiz through the sentiment for you and then we'll look at the layered butterflies in more detail. So there's my sentiment. I simply put this onto teal cardstock. Uh, obviously did the um, embossing through or the running through of the die cutting machine to flatten everything out so it, it's embedded into the cardstock. It looks like foiling. And then I just, it just blended in some darker blue ink around the sentiment just to kind of give it that sort of focus in the middle so that that lovely holographic mirror card really stands out as the foiling. And you can see, hopefully you can see how flat that is to the card. It really does look like it's foiled on there. Then the butterflies I said I would focus on a bit more. Now, these are my textures, floral folk art layering butterflies. Um, there's two different styles in the pack and each one has a couple of different shapes. So it has a few different layers uh, and then the body as well. So I'm actually going to probably leave the body off of this. I might put the body on afterwards. I'll see how it looks. I'm going to go on to black cardstock with these. And I've actually cut this from, uh, this one is a mirrored paper. Um, a foiled paper 
just because I didn't have the rose gold in cardstock. And thankfully this one has already got an adhesive backing, so that's nice and easy. The next layer is a gold mirror card and the next layer is a silver mirror card. So I'm mixing up my metallics here and I just think it looks absolutely beautiful mixed metallics when you're going onto a nice dark background that doesn't detract from those colors. So I'm going to put these on in the same way as I did, but I'm going to do all three before I run it through the machine. Now I can see that the backing is coming off of this already, so I'm going to be very careful with this one. This would work equally as well with three layers of mirror card. Don't worry about the fact that I've got a foiled, a sticky foiled piece here. It just happens to be what I had in the colour that I wanted. So gently place that down first. Then I'm going to use my glue as before all over the back of my die cut and I'm going to start layering these up. Now usually if I'd layer up these die cut butterflies I would have the wings lifted up to give it some dimension but with this it's not going to be possible. You're going to need to have everything down flat but that just um, kind of enhances the real look of having foiling on your card. And foiling is a very expensive looking technique. If you can add foiled elements to your cards it makes them look luxurious. If you're in a shop and you're purchasing a card that's got foiling on it you know it's always going to have that slightly higher price range um, and that's what we really want from a handmade cards as well isn't it. We want people to to think they're expensive and uh, beautifully made and worth a lot of money. So I put a bit of excess glue on there and here's actually a top tip because when you're doing this, you're squeezing um, the, the, card, the mirror card into the cardstock. Any wet glue on there is also going to be squeezed out. So don't overdo it with the glue. A tip for you if you do is to just take a glue eraser. Now everything I'm using, including the glue eraser, including all of the die sets that I've covered here today as well, are all linked down below for you. I purchase virtually everything that I have in my craft stash from craft stash so you'll find the links there. I'm just lining these antenna up that's very important for a nice clean look. Removing any glue and making sure everything's stuck down and then I'm going to go over with the silver layer as well. This is sort of the just the top of the wings here. So I'm kind of spreading the glue on and then almost wiping it off so it's a really thin layer of glue. Once everything's kind of sandwiched together it's not going to budge anywhere. So just lay that over there. Allow that glue to dry for a few minutes. If you've got the time, I definitely let the glue dry before you run it through the machine. That's just going to help you with that um, reducing the squidge out of glue. There we go. Okay. So I've got my three layers, but as you can probably see, there's a bit of dimension there, okay? Looks lovely anyway, but a bit of dimension, and that's what we're not looking for. We want that true, flat, foiled look. So again, let's run that through the machine. In the same there we go, and now that is much, oh, we can see the shine there, that is much flatter to the cardstock. Not as flat as uh, this one that we did, because of course we've only got one layer here, whereas we've got three, but again, definitely that foiled look. So that will be going onto, I don't think it's that one, I think it's this one, onto this card base for a lovely quick foiled card that looks beautiful. Now lastly, I did say about creating a foiled looking card without the use of dies. So I've just used my paper trim here. I mean, you could even go as basic as using scissors for this, but the likelihood is if you've got a die cutting machine to apply the pressure, you've probably got at least a few dies. So, um, I'm going to use just paper strips, but you use whatever you have to hand. And I've cut these really at random um, with the width. They're all from silver. You could mix up your metallics again here as I just did with the butterflies. I've previously stamped a sentiment too. So I'm just going to pop the strips all around the sentiment. I'm going to overlap the card for now. And then once I've glued all these down, we'll come back and run this through the machine. There we go, so I think that's enough on there. Everything's glued down. Just put the lid back on my glue and smooth that out. Now again, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to trim the edges now. You could do this after you've run it through the machine, but I like the nice neat finish that I get if I do all this first. So just making sure your glue is reasonably dry before you run it through the machine, just so again, you don't get that squelching out of the sides. 
There we go, once again, we've got our foiling nice and smooth to our card, not looking like it's just been glued on there. And we've got a really funky, just a line, masculine or teenage card, something nice and simple when you don't want your flowers and butterflies and such on there. So there's three different ways of doing your foiling. Now I'm just going to quickly put these onto card bases, add sentiments to the ones that don't have them, things like that. Uh, and they're the cards that you saw at the beginning. So I hope you've enjoyed this technique and I hope it's given you some ideas for making the most of your mirror card, not having to go out and purchase a foiling machine right now. You might want to later on, but it's certainly a good way of getting started and working out whether you actually love foiling on your paper craft projects or not. If you like anything that I've used in this video, it's all linked down below. I'd really love it if you could give me a thumbs up, uh, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and come and join me for another papercraft tutorial really soon. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.